Hey folks, Sylvia's here. I don't know if that flickering flash shows up on my recording or not. Uh, for some reason, the Alt-O combination causes this game to minimize. Anyway, I'm here with a new game. In a couple of my previous videos, I said I was suggest considering uh, hopping on Dungeons & Dragons Online. Bam, up there. A side note, I'm having a weird sense of deja vu right now. But anyway, so, so I did. I hopped on. I'm playing on the world Kyber right now. Um, originally, I was going to play a Warlock, but uh, I decided to go with a Melee class instead. So, let's see here. Uh, just going over these real quick. This is the character creation process. Um, DDO is a free-to-play game, technically. It's better if you just give them the $15 a month, but uh, we'll get into all that in a second. For now, I just want to go over the different classes you got. Fighters, which are your uh, heavily armored dude, sword and shield you know, wear the heavy armor and stuff like that. Barbarians have a little bit more HP, are resistant to damage, but have less of an armor class, and their trademark ability is to go into a bloody rage and hit things harder, but take more damage. Paladins are holy warriors, they got some self-buffing spells, self-heals, a little bit less pure combat potential than either the barbarian or the fighter. Monks are your kung fu people. They use key. We go into spellcasters, we've got sorcerers and wizards. I'm taking these two as a uh, group for now. Uh, both of them use a type of magic called arcane magic. Arcane magic is your standard fireballs, lightning bolts, things like that. Uh, like that flamethrower he just shot out of his hands there. Uh, the difference between a wizard and a sorcerer is a wizard knows all arcane spells, but he can only prepare a couple of them in his spell book. A sorcerer knows a smaller amount of spells, but any spell he knows, he can cast at a moment's notice. Um, so basically, a sorcerer has to, when he levels up, pick which spell he wants to learn. And be like, okay, well, am I going to learn Fireball? Am I going to learn Lightning Bolt? And if the sorcerer takes Fireball, and then he's fighting a whole bunch of fire immune enemies, he's got nothing. A wizard learns all of the spells and prepares one, so he prepares Fireball, but realizes he's going to fight a whole bunch of fire immune enemies, so he switches to Lightning Bolt, or so on. Sorcerers and wizards can't wear armor without jumping through a whole bunch of hoops, because it'll interfere with their spell casting drastically. They have low HP, they're pretty fa frail, they're your typical glass cannons, but they can do tons of damage. Clerics! And favorite souls, I'm going to take at the same time also, because they're both pretty similar and they share the same relationship that wizards and sorcerers have. Clerics know all of the divine type spells, which are healing spells, buff spells, bless, prayer, protection from energies of various forms, resistance to elements, defensive buffs, and things like that. Um, clerics know them all, but have to prepare them just like the wizard does. The favorite soul, however, knows a smaller amount, but can cast any that he knows. Uh, unlike wizards and sorcerers, clerics get a decent amount of HP when they level up, and they can wear armor. It doesn't affect their spell casting at all. Um, they're also moderately competent in combat. Uh, so, like, they can wear a sword and a shield and kind of go in and stuff like that, and they can wear heavy armor. Um, one note of uh, thing to note about favorite souls and sorcerers, though, is that uh, they have more spell points, so they can cast more spells than wizards and clerics. Uh, but they also get access to more powerful spells slightly slower than clerics and wizards. So if your goal is to cast the spells as soon as possible, wizard and uh, cleric are the way to go. Anyway, druids are divine casters, but they have a mix of things, a uh, slightly different set of spells. Most of it's based on like nature stuff. They can also summon animals, and they can also turn themselves into animals. Warlocks are a new class. They're very different from the others. They know very few spells. The spells they do know, though, are... Um, Arcane spells. They're mostly known for their ability to shoot a energy beam called a Eldritch Blast incessantly. Finally, we have the specialist. Iconic are something irrelevant, just for the record. Rangers dual wield or are archers, basically. Uh, unfortunately, ranged combat's kind of poor in this game. Uh, it doesn't. It has vastly reduced DPS. Um, it just it and. Uh, like, tanks have a pretty hard time physically preventing enemies from getting to a ranged character. So it creates a whole slew of problems. Ranged combat isn't super great. They do dual wield, though, and they have a thing all about dual wielding. So if you wanted to dual wield, a ranger is a good option. They also have a decent amount of skills, but they can't wear heavy armor. And at higher levels, they can cast some divine magic. 
Rogues are your assassin issue type characters. They get an ability called Sneak Attack, which makes them deal additional damage whenever they're flanking an enemy, which basically means whenever they and somebody else are attacking an enemy. Uh, they can go in the, they can do like hide and stealth stuff, but when you're playing with other people, nobody cares about stealth at all. Nobody is going to stand around and be like, alright guys, we're just going to wait for 5-10 minutes while the rogue goes up here and scouts things out and sneak attacks everybody in the back. It doesn't happen. So you don't need to worry about that aspect. Unfortunately, I'm playing solo for most of these videos, so a uh, rogue would be a really poor option for me. A notable fact about rogues, though, is, is that they're the only class besides artificers down here that can disarm traps and pick locks. And that does make them important. Bards are your jack-of-all-trades, master of none. They're okay at melee combat. They're semi-arcane casters, but they don't have the damage-dealing potential of the other guys. They have more of, like, enchantment spells and, like, debuffs and things like that. They're also good at buffing by playing music. And they also have some skills, but they're not as good at skills as rogues. They're not as good at combat as fighters or anybody else. They're not as good at spell casting as anybody else. They're not bad, though. And then Artificer, I'm not too sure about it, because it didn't exist when I played last, and uh, it also doesn't exist in the traditional D&D 3.5 that I'm familiar with. This game is based on 3.5, but it's made a lot of changes. Uh, so I don't know a lot about Artificers. Anyway, I'm not 100% certain what kind of character I'm going to play, but I'm thinking I'm probably just going to go generic and play a fighter. Probably. It's a tough call, actually. Part of me wants to play a Monk. I could play a monk, I could play a fighter. Let's go with a fighter, alright. Um, one thing I want to mention real quick too is that uh, this game's got kind of a steep learning curve. So I'm going to try to, when I do my Let's Plays, I'm doing this as kind of like an intro, like here's what you should be keeping an eye on and things like that. Uh, and I want to give a disclaimer in that things may have changed since I played last, so my, like, you should do A, B, and C might no longer be the best thing. Maybe X, Y, Z is slightly better. But, generally speaking, when I go don't do option number three, that stays pretty true. Anyway, this game does have a steep learning curve. New players are going to probably be pretty confused because it's very complex. And uh, looking at it on the wiki or something like that is probably going to be insufficient. And you're also going to get a lot of bleed over because the game has changed a lot and there isn't really a good source of a whole bunch of information. And while you're searching for this, you're going to find information about real Dungeons & Dragons, which isn't the same thing. So it's pretty confusing for new players. For people who already know about Dungeons & Dragons version 3.5, which is what this is based off of, you're going to be equally confused as a new player. And the reason for that is, while a new player is going to not know anything, a veteran of D&D will think that they know things, and then get completely caught off guard by the things that have changed. So, that's just how that works. But anyway, so moving on. For each of the different classes, you've got these three paths, or you can go custom. See, they're slightly different. Savage of the Wild, Storm of Cargon, Bastion of the Outlands, Vanguard Warrior, Stalwart Soldier, Whirlwind Fighter. Don't pick any of them. Customize always. Every single one of these are horrible. Don't pick any of them. Alright. You got a selection of races. This is not purely a, like, cosmetic thing. Elves, for instance, you can actually look at it over here. Um, elves start with higher decks but lower constitution. They also get, let's see, Elven Keen Senses. They won't tell me what they do. Well, they get all these various things. So, for example, long swords are considered martial weapons. Sorcerers don't get uh, proficiency with long swords, but an elvish sorcerer will. Elves also get, you know, enchantment bonuses and all these other various things like that. Generally speaking, though, every class wants constitution because constitution determines HP. Any race that gives you a negative to HP is questionable. Furthermore, dex is slightly less useful in this game under under most circumstances. So a boost to dex but a minus to constitution is definitely not worth it. Constitution is always important. Dex is only important sometimes. So keep that in mind. Alright. Hold on a second. I gotta drink something. Sorry, folks. I'm a little thirsty. <coughs> Halflings minus strength but gain dex. In actual D&D, &D, um, weapons have size. 
so a weapon size for a halfling would go one die down. A halfling's longsword, for instance, is actually a human short sword. So a halfling with a longsword would do as much damage as a human with a short sword, assuming their strength is the same. That's not how this works. A halfling's great sword is exactly the same as a, a human's great sword. Uh, so halflings are actually a very viable option here. Still, though, I don't like being short. Plus, I don't like taking a hit to strength. Dwarves, uh, minus to charisma, plus to strength. I don't like playing a dwarf, though. It's an aesthetic reason for me. Likewise, they also get a couple of bonuses and stuff like that. Still, though, I don't like dwarves. Warforged to robot dudes. They get, um, yeah, they get a bonus to constitution, but a reduction to wisdom and charisma. They also are only half as affected by healing spells, which make them kind of tough to heal. Um, they can be healed by an arcane type spell called repair, but uh, usually it's a hassle, because arcane types don't want to be healing the warforged. Um, half elves don't get any kind of bonuses to stats, and they're kind of a mix between humans and elves. I don't really like half elves. Uh, dark elves get reduced point, point by. Uh, point by will get to, but you get 32 points to build your character with this, assuming you did various things, just for the record. Dark elves start you with 28, but that's because dark elves give you a minus 2 constitution, but a plus to dex, intelligence, and charisma. The problem with that is, is that dex isn't super important, and very few classes need both intelligence and charisma. Charisma is important for sorcerers. Intelligence is important for um, wizards. But you shouldn't multi-class. You can multi-class, by the way. You shouldn't multi-class those two things. It's usually a bad idea. Half-orcs. Get higher strength, but lower intelligence and charisma. I'm actually going to play a half-orc, because I feel like it right now. So, that's my half-orc. Now, the point buy. Half-orcs here, you see, they start with 10 here, but reduced intelligence and charisma. That's not going to affect me too much, because I'm a fighter. I want to point out, though, this is the point buy. You can see I've got 32 points here. Each point here, it tells you how much it costs. Now, at 14, the points start costing 2. At 16, the points cost 3. So... I can only put Wisdom and Constitution here, for example, up to 16, or 18 each side, and it takes up all of my points. For the reduced intelligence and the reduced strength here... Oh, sorry, it was Constitution, the one that I put points in. Uh, this I can actually get up to 20 at the same cost as getting the other ones up to 18. Intelligence I can only get up to 16 at the cost of getting it up for the other one. This kind of gives you advice on what you want over here. Generally important, though, in in normal D&D, you would never neglect your armor class. In this, you're going to kind of collect, I think at least, unless they've changed it. I'm not too sure, actually. Anyway, though, for me, though, what's important to me is strength. I'm going to set that up to 18 for now. I don't want a negative to dex, because that's kind of painful. In fact, I might just put it up to 12. And I'll put constitution up to 16. That leaves me with 8 points. Um... Maybe I could do this. Go for pure damage. I don't want to mess with dex too much, though. I could maybe up my wisdom. Yeah. Maybe put dex down one and put con one. All right. You'll also note here that odd numbers don't have any... The important here thing here is your ability modifier. The plus 5. You'll note here that, like, okay, currently I've got a plus 3 here. I put one additional point in, it's still plus 3. The modifier only goes up on even numbers. And the actual point value here is 100% useless. It's only what the ability modifier is. Now, 5 is always from 20 or 21, but these numbers aren't used in any kind of calculations. Now I get skill points. Um, the skills you get and the amount of points you get are based off of your class and your intelligence. Rogues, for instance, get, um, I think it's eight skill points per level and uh, eight times four at first level. Uh, it's actually eight plus your intelligence modifier then. So a rogue with an intelligence of ten would get eight skill points per level or... 
uh, 32 at first level here. You can only have a minimum, though, of 1. So I take a minus 2 to my intelligence, so if I was a rogue with a minus 2 to intelligence, I would get 6. Fighters, however, only get 2 in the first place, so 2 minus 2 minimum of 1 gives me 1. Now, a bunch of these skills are varying usefulness and various things like that. There's also a concept of class skills. The fighter's class skills are Intimidate, Jump, Repair, and Swim. Everything else is a, a cross-class skill. You see how I put four points into this and it went up by four? If we go to a cross-class skill, each point of my that I'm putting in are only giving me 0.5. So I was only able to get that up to two. Um, of the ones that the fighter can get, I think Jump is probably the most important. Jump is actually important because it lets you get into places that you can't always get to. Um, another useful one that if I had extra points I would put it into, but I don't, is Balance. Balance prevents you from falling on your face when enemies cast spells like Grease or uh, when you're on ice and things like that. It's kind of useful sometimes. Everything else is kind of dependent on your class. Like if you're a rogue, you definitely want points in like Search because that helps you find hidden doors and things like that and so on. Next step here is picking feats. The notable thing about Fighter is that at level 1, and then every even level, so 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, so on, you get a bonus feat. Um, the bonus feats are technically from this list right here of only being able to show you special feats. So you do have various options here. Um, you'll see that there's quite a list, and other feats will be unlocked as things progress and stuff like that. Um, and then also, everybody gets a feat at first level. So, exotic weapons are specialty type weapons um, that require you to have additional training. It's questionable whether or not exotic weapons proficiency is worth it, and it's usually not worth it at the beginning just for the record. Now, I'm going to be a, uh, a two-hander, I think. I think. I don't know. I'm not sure yet. Let's think about this. Hold on for a second. Um, when you talk about combat, your two options are basically dual-wielding, like sword-sword, one in each hand. A two-hander, great sword, great sword, things like that. Or uh, sword and shield. I mean, of course, you also have, like, bow and arrow, crossbow and bolts, and, like, you know, magic staff and things like that. Um, however, to take two-weapon fighting and be anything other than awful at it, you need um, a high enough dex. And I do not have that high enough dex on this character. So dual wielding is not an option for me. So right now, my option is either sword and shield or two-hand. I'm actually thinking sword and shield, though. You can shield bash... I forget exactly how that works, though. So I'm not going to take that. Ugh. Man, I can't, I'm can't. i not sure what I want to do, man. I'm actually torn. <clears throat> What's Shield Mastery do? Plus 5 physical resistance when using a buckler or a uh, small shield. Plus 5 when using a large shield. Plus 10 when using a tower shield. Chance of double strike. Three, plus 3 combat style bonus to melee power. Yeah, okay, they've definitely changed things that I'm not 100% certain how they work anymore. You know, I'm just going to go with two-handed weapons. Two-handed fighting. Whatever. Uh, and I want to take either toughness or power attack. Let's take power attack. Power attack's usually a good option. Power attack, there we go. Uh, these octagon-shaped ones are passives. They're always on, and that's it. Um, these ones here are active, so you need to actually hit them. Some of them are toggles, like you toggle them on and off. Some of them are, uh, like, actives, like, you know, use, you know, a spell, for instance, cast a fireball. Power attack is a toggle. When it's on, it reduces your attack by whatever your base attack bonus is, up to a maximum of five. It increases your damage by, if you're wielding a one-handed weapon, by whatever your base attack bonus is. For a fighter, base attack bonus is equal to my level. So I would have a base attack bonus. You can actually see it somewhere around here. It should be. Am I blind? Maybe it's not on the screen. I guess it's not. My base attack bonus, though, is a 1. 
right now. So if I toggle power attack, if I was using a one-handed weapon, I would take a minus one to hit, but my damage would go up by one. However, with a two-handed weapon, it's times two. So minus one, and then one times two, so my attack would go up by two. At level two, it would be minus two, attack goes up by four, and so on. Alright, let's see what can I do with my hair. Silvius is going to, uh, or whatever I end up naming this guy, because Silvius is probably taken. My dude, though, is going to be wearing a, uh, helmet, I think, most of the time. Yeah, we'll give him a brutal scar across his face. Let's see. Should we give him a beard? Sold. Let's give him a... Oh, God, that nose is horrible. Alright, we'll give him nice, uh... Nice light blue eyes. Nah, let's go with green. Nah, it's kind of a gross color. Orange, whatever. Nah. Yellow. Yeah, he'll have yellow eyes. Give him the burly eyebrows. You can also change his skin color. Kind of make him greenish. Yellowish. Reddish. I, wanna, I kinda like the green though. We're gonna leave him green. Um, alignment is kind of meh. Some weapons require you to have certain alignments. Some weapons require you to not have certain alignments. Um, some enchantments and things like that are different. Uh, there are certain spells that deal damage to... Like, there's a spell called um, like Chaos Hammer, which only deals damage to lawful people. And things like that. Mostly, this is a... <clears throat> mostly a relevant aspect. Can I switch his tusks? Oh, I don't want a broken tusk. I don't know, I kind of like having the, uh, the smaller ones, I think. I don't know. There we go. Alright, let's name my dude Silvius. I know Silvius is taken because I actually have a Silvius too. So we'll just put the extra S in there. Alright, that's me. Yeah! So now we're gonna play. When you first log on, there's a moment of, like, lag where the game doesn't exactly move. You can check it by jumping. I do, however, wish these weren't just moved around randomly each time I come on. I'm not sure what's up with that. Alright, so this is kind of the situation here. You can attack. I'm attacking. Woo! You can jump. The higher your jump skill, the physically, like, larger distance you can jump. Um, I also think it helps reduce falling damage. You can see the different chat purposes up here. I've got HP. I think that says I have mail. My level. I believe that says my microphone is active. I have to double check that at some point. This one refers to whatever I'm targeting. Uh, this kind of tells you the quest. There's a dragon over yonder. And then down here, you have your, like, task card bar. So if I push one right now, I'll go into sneak mode. Yeah. I'm going to take that off, though, because I basically never want to use that. Um, Sunder is an ability that reduces enemy armor class. There's kind of no reason not to use it. Defensive fighting is kind of pointless. Uh, trip can be actually an okay option. Search is important, and then that's my power attack. Anyway, uh, if you purchase or unlock, you can start at level 4, you can start at level 7, but I'm going to start at level 1 on Porthos Island. You find yourself waking on a shore of Flotsam. Memories of a large white dragon striking your ship come flooding back. There's my ship. And there should be a large white dragon flying around here somewhere. Ah, oh, you're awake! Oi, you ain't undead, are you? Do I look undead? I'm fabulous looking. Hints appear throughout the tutorial experience to help you learn about the game. Can you, can you move? On, you can click on any hint to uh, display more information. Use the arrow keys or WASD keys to move your character. Just for the record, I'm using my little gamepad thing, which does make this game a little bit can better. Can you talk? Speak, Speak to, to me. me. Walk closely and left click on Jeets to talk to him. I could skip this, 
I'm not going to that one. Are you looking for survivors or looting bodies? Now don't go blaming a poor rogue for making a living. Besides, I didn't take nothing from you. You got nothing worth taking. I seem to have misplaced my belongings. It's right dangerous to walk around without a blade. For my good deed of the day, I can give you something back at the camp. All right, if leave the what way. the halfling said was true, no one but you made it to the island alive. This way? It may be worth following this Follow rogue. Me. For now. Yeah, again, uh, while holding down the right the mouse button, you know, me. I'm not going to read anything that kind of explains controls, just for the record. They're kind of self-explanatory. Here we are. I do, so I want to check something real quick. Hold on a second. All right, folks, my apologies. I forgot to do this. Now, let me pause and make sure that actually worked. Okay, it worked. Yeah, I meant to do that at the beginning. My bad. All right, here's that weapon for you, but then you got to do me a little favor, tit for tat, right? I will take the great X. I'll take that as a yes. Here, which of these do you want? Go ahead. Give a few swings. Yeah, okay. I key will open up my inventory, talking to NPCs, blah, 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 blah. As you take hold of the weapon, feeling its balance, you can't help but notice this Jeets has more he wants to say. Yeah, but I want to break all this record. Alright, let's talk to Jeets. Um, this weapon suits you, so ready to help me out? Here's the deal. Selimas is waiting for us uh, up in a cave up the path. Go tell her we'll be along shortly, just as soon as we finish with all the uh, salvage on the beach. That's it? Give a message to Selimas? Well, I'm sure Selimas would appreciate any help you can give her, too. And it'll make her less likely to smash my noggin in when I catch up. Very well, I'll go to this cave. Salimas is at the grotto. Tell Salimus. her to keep her knickers on. Salimas is in the grotto. I shall show you the way. I want the starter potion. Ah, oh, yeah. Copper coins. It is 100 copper coins makes a silver. 100 silver coins makes a gold. 100 gold coins. Or wait, no. Tell me. Was it exciting to see a dragon up close? You know, I could be wrong. Also, let's see, did we see the dragon again? Let me, uh... Yeah, alright, sorry, it's, I, I was actually wrong. It is, in fact, ten coppers make a silver, ten silvers make a gold, ten golds make uh, a platinum. There's the dragon. Can't remember if you get to fight that dragon in the game or not. By the way, there isn't a, too much in this game where it's like, we are. lol, you can fight dragons at low levels. I for Jeeps. Most likely, if you try to fight a dragon at this level, you would die. Horrifically. Alright. I'll talk about this later on. For now, I can only go in on solo difficulty because this dungeon is designed to be only done on solo difficulty. Is this Salimus, the cleric you were sent to find? Who in Kyber are you? I'm Fred. Nah, I'm Silvius. Identify yourself. I am a fighter, Silvius. A dragon attacked my ship, and I alone survived. I met, uh, I then met your companions who asked me to protect you until they arrived. Or, my name is Silvius, and I woke up on the beach to a rogue who most likely took my possessions. He then extorted a pro my promise to be your lackey. Let's go with the first one. Until they arrive? Is Jeet still, uh, sifting through the wreckage? I'll wring that little throat until his tongue falls out. Ugh. If you're willing to help me, I don't fancy waiting around for those idiots anymore. Is Talborn uh, your friend? Why is he at the camp and not here helping you? Talborn has my highest respect. He has a history with Jeets and they're inseparable. Still, I wish they'd hurry. With all the swaggin' in these caves, I'll sorely miss Talborn's sorcery. What's a swaggin'? They're ugly, scaly, slimy, and they like to sacrifice innocence to their dark devourer god. For these reasons, I'm eager to smite them. What exactly are you doing in these caves? I've been hired to clear the cave of Sawagon. Jeets and Talborn are supposed to help me. I hope they don't tarry too long. If they come with me, if you come with me, you should be comfortable with Sawagon blood all over that rusty weapon of course, of yours. Who hired you? My employer desires anonymy, and I desire his gold. Rest assured, though, we do the work for good. I would not have taken the task otherwise. All right, let's do this. First, I shall surround us with a protection spell. Her spell temporarily prevents you from dying. Though you can still suffer injuries. This effect will wear off when you leave these caves. Now, let's be about it. You can dance. A gate? There must be a way to open it. 
try up that ladder. I have a flat. remain here and bash any Sawagan trying to sneak out. The game uh, does have like a surround sound aspect to it. You hear the shuffling oh, it's a and the wheezing of some creature coming from the corridor ahead. Power attack. Killed in one hit. The corroded lever at the rear of this corridor most likely controls the gate where the cleric, Salimus, is waiting. Good job, but no time to dawdle. Let's rock and roll, come people. to assist you. Onward to glory. Salimus isn't too honked at me. Thanks for putting in the good word. Don't you worry, Salimus. I'm here to watch your behind now. The evil aura is oppressive. So Wagen are behind this door. See how I'll you can tell, point. like the. Talbrot, well, actually, I'm not sure spells. if you can tell. Jeets, kill anything that tries I'm not 100% certain if my recording you program is recording. The door. In a surround sound or not. Charge! Charge! What? It's empty? Oi, where's the bloody Sawagin? Look, I'm the sad. door closed behind us. I'm it so sad. It would be logical to assume. You can sort of, uh play in first person if you so desire. But it's a little awkward because you can't see your weapon. You can also, I suppose, zoom out at this point. By the way, that spell she cast on me that prevents me from dying, it will actually prevent me from going down uh, to zero HP, I think is how that works. Uh, but that spell only exists in this dungeon. The righteous smite you! Get back here. Kill them! By the way, I have a tendency to always click, so I'm not so sure if that's being picked wretches, up by the microphone. You but you can just Come hold down the button down. Fight. I just don't like doing it. For the flame. She is a cleric of the silver flame, in case that wasn't abundantly clear. Well, to be fair, it probably wasn't actually. Well, oh, I'm hitting pretty hard. Such is the fate of evil. Now, let's find a way out of here. Ah. Door locked? Can't take this. Anyone see a key? Curious. I just stepped on something. A latch? Good work. Let's go swimming. I see a key down there. Who's up for a swim? You grab the silver key. To Time to swim for the surface. You can drown. I knew you'd come in, Andy. This way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These oh, things yeah. here are uh, resurrection shrines choice. and rest shrines. Ha, I still got resurrection shrines are used if you're dead. When you Why die, you, you drop an me? item called a soul stone, Just and you become a ghost. In trouble. Um, talking, monsters can't hurt I'll you when you're a ghost. Thing. You can't hurt monsters. You can run from your soul stone, but if you get far enough away from it, you have five seconds to return, and after those five seconds, you teleport back to the stone. Um, so if you died, like, right here, you'd definitely be able to walk over to this, use it, and bring yourself back to life. However, if you died all the way down there, past in the other room or something like that, you might not be able to get over here. Faster characters, of course, can run from you. Uh, and your teammates, if you're not playing solo, can pick up your soul stone and carry you to the resurrection shrine. Or they can pick up your soul stone and carry you further away from the resurrection shrine if they're jerks. The rest shrine, you sit down at it. After you finish resting, you'll heal up a little bit. If you're a spellcaster, you'll get your spell points back. For characters that prepare their spells, they can reset their spells here. If you're um, done resting, go and scout ahead with Jeets. If you have any kind of only used a certain amount of time per day's Talk. kind of events, like the Barbarian's Rage or things like that, um... It'll reset those. Traps can do serious damage if you run into them. Rogues and artificers can disarm traps. Restaurants, yeah, same deal. Boy, that's a nasty trap. Lucky for you, I'm here. Why's that? Only blokes with rogue skills can deal with traps. Blokes like me, don't you worry. If you really want to, you can find a trainer to teach you rogue abilities. Once you've got enough experience to handle it, it, is, it that is. So to disarm a trap, you need to do a search check and find the little uh, panel. He's going to find the panel. There's the panel. Um, if your search check isn't high enough, you can't disarm the trap. Furthermore, the search only hits like a radius around your character. 
So if that panel were, say, over here, and you stood here and searched, you might not find it, because it's over there. And then you also have to be able to disarm the trap, the final part. There are uh, spells, I think, that can find traps. You two having fun? But there aren't spells that can disarm traps. There are spells, though, that can unlock the doors and chests. Should be up ahead. The onus for much suffering rests you can also upon her fail slimy, webbed hands. to um, disarm a trap so bad that you break there the panel and then can't try again. Performing some kind of profane blood magic. I will open the door. Prepare yourself. The, uh, the red name of the Swagon High Priestess indicates that she's a boss monster. Um, boss monsters are, you know, tougher and all that jazz, but they also can't be affected by certain According spells. Our employer, there's a secret uh, like, here instant death spells won't work on bosses, most kinds of mind control and things like that won't happen. Um, now this was a slightly bad example, because this chest, um, is always... You know, I'll explain it in a different video. Meanwhile, though, I got new armor. Um, armor actually takes a little bit of time to equip. So you can't swap armor on and off in the middle of the dungeon. But, um, you can see actually I'm wearing my armor now. I'm also gonna get rid of these, uh, starter rags. And I'm gonna get rid of, rid of the shield, because I'm not gonna ever use the shield. Anyway. My rogue senses are tingling. There's something fishy in this room. Try searching you around. You feel a stiff draft from somewhere in this room. Perhaps the hidden passage to the Found village the is passage? in here. There we go. Go on, open it then. Brilliant. Um, Tidy lasses and so yeah. up the wazoo. Here I come. You can't swap armor quickly, here. but you can swap Way other things like helmets, shields, first, weapons. You for your so, for example, Please come speak with me. Uh, zombies take reduced damage from piercing and bludgeoning weapons. Skeletons take reduced damage from slashing and piercing weapons. So you want to use a slashing weapon on zombies, but a blunt weapon on uh, skeletons. So if you have two of them, you could potentially hotkey them, for instance. You know, use an axe or a sword to fight the zombies, and then quick swap to the other one. Same with uh, other types of things. It's just armor that takes time. We've made it, Silvius. The door ahead should take us out to the village. But before we go, I want to give you something from my stash, and thanks for your assistance to me and my fellows this day. Ha, ah, call me Silimas. May you always walk the righteous path, Silvius, and the holy flame look kindly upon your days and deeds. So now she gives me an item, I'm gonna take the Ember Great Axe. And I got experience points. So let's equip my new uh, axe. Let's throw my old one on the floor. Oh, I should have probably kept that for a second so that you could see exactly what it does, but whatever. Um, I'll equip these arrows. So yeah, you can see what my Great Axe here does. It does 1d12 plus zero slash damage. Um, the critical hit is on a 20, so I have a 5% chance of getting it, and it does three times damage, so it'll do three to 36 damage. That's the base stats of the weapon. If I click on details down here, you can actually see what I do, which is 1d12 plus my strength, and when you wield a two-handed weapon, strength and a half. I forget if that rounds up or not. I guess it rounds down. Yeah, because my strength is a five. Half of that would be 2.5, it rounds down to 2 and does 7. And then when I have power attack on, you see it goes up to 9, and my chance to hit goes from 7 to 6. You see my armor class over here and all this other jazz too. You can also, I think, pull up like information on my armor, I think through my character. Yeah, you can kind of see my stats over here. All this jazz, skills, feats, spells, enchantments, and my crafting skills. Of course, I don't have any. Anyway, uh... Stepping out of the grotto, you find yourself in Corthos Village. The Sahuagin have threatened this place for generations. Judging from how it looks now, the Sahuagin are winning. However, some hopeful souls still hold out for help to arrive. Um, okay. I haven't decided exactly how I want to handle my Let's Play for this. I'm not sure if I want to, um... If I want to do, like, one quest per video, or I want to do it kind of like a playthrough. I think I want to do it like a playthrough, is how I'm going to handle it. So I am going to end the video here. Um, 
let me log out back to the menu. Um, so yeah, you can see Sylvia's tube there. Uh, so yeah. In future ones, you know, future videos, I might do two or three quests in a video, depending on how long the video is taking and things like that. Um, I may actually team up with other people and whatnot too. So anyway, yeah, I will do this like I do my Tibia Leaf videos, where I do uh, everything I do in this game gets recorded, basically. Besides for, like, meaningless time spent on, like, the auction house and things like that. Um, anyway, though, I'd like to say like, favorite, comment, subscribe, check me out on Facebook, Patreon, and Twitter, and uh, tell me what you think about Didio. For now, though, I gotta go.